43, welcome to section 6.5, example five. We're gonna take a look at writing each of these logarithmic, or excuse me, each of these expressions as a single logarithm with a coefficient of one. And we're gonna assume all of our variables are positive numbers and that our base isn't one so that we're not violating any domain issues with um, logarithms. So when I say I want a single logarithm, you can see right here I have three separate logarithms and I wanna combine them. So the first thing to take note is that the bases are the same. So if I wanna use any of the properties of logarithms in this section, the bases have to be the same. If they weren't the same, then I couldn't simplify them into a single expression or into a single logarithm. And that would have been fine, I just, you need to recognize that. So when I take a look at these first two terms, right, I'm gonna look at log x minus log y, again, same basis, but I'm gonna use the quotient rule. And what the quotient rule says is I can take these two separate logarithms and combine them into a single logarithm, but now the argument is gonna be a quotient, it's x over y, that's why it was called the quotient rule. But you can see I've gone from two logarithms, excuse me, I've gone from three logarithms, I started with three, one, two, three, and now I'm down to two. And we have a different logarithm rule. We have the, the product rule, which says if you have two separate logarithms, which I do, I have one here and one here, and they're being added together, I can combine them into one single logarithm. Oops, let me write L-O-G. All right, and what I can do is I can multiply the arguments. So I would have x over y times z, and when we go to multiply that z into that fraction, keep in mind you can think of this as having its own parentheses if you want, that's z over one, I'm gonna multiply numerators, multiply denominators, and I'm looking at log base four of xz over y. And again, it's up to you. If you prefer to have the parentheses around your argument, you're more than welcome to. Now, I do have one single logarithm and the coefficient is one. There's a secret one outside of here. So I'm good to go on that one. Now over on part B, you can see that I have some coefficients right out the gate. I have a four in front of that first logarithmic term and a five in front of that second logarithmic term. So I'm gonna use the power rule for logarithms and move both of these coefficients out in front up as a power on our argument. So this is gonna simplify to log base b of r to the fourth minus log base b of s to the fifth. And then I can see, that, well, I have two separate logarithms. They're separated by a subtraction sign. So I can use the quotient rule, just like I use the quotient rule over here, or I should say the quotient property of logarithms. And so I can collapse this or simplify this into one logarithm but now the argument's gonna be a quotient. And again, if you want to, you can put parentheses around those, those log, or excuse me, around that argument if you want. And I, I've done what the direction said. I have a single logarithm here, and the coefficient in front of it would be a secret one. So I've, I've solved that problem. All right, thanks so much, everyone. Bye.